Hey friends, Hello. it's me, Cynthia, and Azalea, and we're Green Girl Studios. Today on our magic hour, I'm going to show you some wax working and some of the silver that we cast this week to replace some of the stuff that was lost, and we have some bronze that's in the overstock of the collection. And what else am I doing today? You're doing some wax work for a demo. Oh, I'm going to do some wax work. <laughs> I like this. It's thick. Yeah. You should you, show that. I will show it. that. That is handsome. I know. You know what? I'm going to, I think I want to show people some stretches. So when we were on a retreat, when were we on retreat? It was like three days ago. What? That was like a week ago now. Was it a it week? Last it doesn't week. feel like a week. It feels like yesterday. There was a physical therapist there and she showed us, she's like, okay, crafters, get ready to learn some stretches when we were getting ready to be in the, the sharing group. And... At which case Azalea fled because she'd had about enough of people. Oh, so she was, I need alone time sometimes. She was done <laughs> with Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so here's one. You missed this one. I'm they looking. said, okay, so here's one I learned. Uh, she said, do this one for your neck. So you have your neck at a neutral position, straight ahead, and you push your head back like someone said something shocking to you. You know, like think of something like they're like, I hate flowers. And then you're like, you know, like that, do that. So here's it from the side view. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, we were all in a circle. And one of the things, I'll stand up for this one. She's like, all right, here's another one. She goes, put your hands in like a position like you're like, why? So you go in and out like this. <laughs> and on the other side of the room, all the ladies were doing it. And it was like synchronized swimming. We were all kind of mesmerized by each other. So this one stretches out your shoulder blades. So another one that's good is squeeze your shoulder blades together. Like you're just squeezing them like you've got something back there and you're trying to squeeze it. So then you get back in neutral position and then you squeeze it. And now I'm getting warm from the, the extremely bright lights in here. There's another one that was, what was the other one? Oh, this was a good one. You get your hands in this position. Oh, bracelet, why? You get your hands like this, like, okay, magic, and then like this, and then like this, and then fist. And apparently, it's supposed to strengthen the tendons in your hands and your forearms. And there's another one where you're, you're just touching your each finger to your thumb and you can kind of feel, or maybe you can even see that the shadow when you're doing it. And so that's a stretch. Here's a good one. This is, I just learned this one. So look over, say your left shoulder and look as far as you can. And then you have that um, side, what is it? The left arm on top. And then you like this, like you're in an I dream of genie position. So like this five times and it's like a magic trick. I wasn't counting. I think that was five. And then when you turn, it's like you can almost turn your head and then you do it the other side, other arm on top, the genie pose. And then when you look, you're like an owl. Your head can almost rotate. Well, not, you know, not quite like an owl, but you see what I mean. Anyway, there's some pretty good stretches. If you're crafting, you can be sitting at your table and you can do some of these stretches and you know make sure your neck is not you could actually hear that that time of my neck cracking so it's good to do stretches get in there you know break it up so you don't get problems my mom crochets so hard she got tendonitis and even that didn't stop her she's still crocheting like crazy so don't be like my mom stretch yourself out every once in a while get your neck do the one where you're surprised and then I'm going to do another one. I Maybe I will. I'll show it later. Maybe. It's, it's a yoga pose. So what I'm doing now is I'm straightening up my area here. I'm going to switch this. And I'm going to get this uh, wax going. So we have some friends here. Hello, Kalite. Cherie. Robin, hi. Hi, Cindy. Wendy. Hello, Deanna. Hello, Carrie. And Mary. All our friends here, Wendy, 
Nilda, hello. Thank you all for joining us today. It's We had a really good day. So perfect outside. You know what? I didn't go outside except for a minute. I walked a lot this week. I went with some of my friends. They said, hey, Cynthia, you want to come with us on a short walk around the Arboretum? I was like, Arboretum, of course, easy. And what I didn't realize is that they're pro hikers. And so they park on the outside lot and start at that point. So it's several miles to the Arboretum buildings and they get out at this part. I'm like, oh, you guys are starting here. That's, wow, that's cool. <laughs> and we went in this wide circle around the whole property, around Bent Creek. It was six and a half miles. I was like, man, and they were not slowing down for anything. I kept saying, oh, look at this beautiful tulip. That's so I could, it was, so I could kind of catch my breath for a minute because most of it was uphill pretty challenging but afterward I felt good and felt accomplished it was a nice feeling all right I'm gonna switch this camera over ah oh, hello Pat hello Terry love your name Maybelline oh our friend Clem oh and June so exciting thank you all for joining us it's so awesome all right I've been doing some wax work all week Ooh, is Zoya tighten this good? Right, let's get in here. Okay, so this is uh, in here. I have some denatured alcohol. I might, I might uh, get a little taller. Maybe. Maybe. Put this, this rainbow block. It's so rainbow. It's almost too much. Whoa. It is, I know. I couldn't resist it. Yeah, a casual stroll. Oh. <laughs> uh, wax works. A ca yeah, it was casual. I was like, whoa, this is something else. Because I usually go like maybe two miles maybe three but not that far oh yeah <laughs> yeah the stretches are good i didn't know that i needed them so it was definitely nice to learn a few new stretches my favorite one is the head turning one the i dream of genie stretch that's a good one i worked on this today this is a frog that i'm working on a game I'm going to show you the prototype. So here's a quick peek at my game that I'm working on. These are the lily pads that they go on. Look at that. It's a little tadpole. Let me see what I have underneath this one. There's just so many of them that don't have anything on it. There. Oh, and I did some bugs. These are lily pads. These are what's underneath. Isn't that cute? And this goes on top of it, like this. So I'm going to cast these in resin. It's my prototype for my game I'm working on. It's first sneak peek. All right. Oh, and this is a frog bead I made pretty recently. I don't know why I love their feet like that. It's so good. I'm going to need my Optivisors. So I've heard a lot of people ask me over the years, they'd say, hey, how do you see all these? Oh, yeah, Wendy, those are wood. It's it's wood now, but I would like to sculpt it in some other kind of material. All right, let me get this going. These are Optivisors. I want to make some that aren't, aren't so utilitarian. I tried to spray paint them gold, and then the things fell out. That's friendly plastic. But those make it so that you can see everything in high def. Oh, a frog and a lily plat cat pad clasp. Yeah, I've been that's been on my on the works for a while. I just and I think I made one, but it did not have the same effect that I thought it would have. It kept flipping, so I didn't want that story. I don't know why I buy these beige lighters. Look, when you set them down on the desk, look, disappear. All right, so there's denatured alcohol in here. 
I'll light that up. So it's kind of a medium flame. And I think, you know what I'm in the mood for? I'm in the mood for something that I can... Oh, I wanted to show this. Look at this weird clasp I was designing. I don't know if I'll do anything with that. I liked it, but I don't know. I have a lot of clasps that are in the works. Like, look at this. Who knows if that will work? I'll have to test it. Yeah, I have a koi and and no, it, it's uh, what is it's koi and like a pond. So that was a little bit better. This is one that's could potentially be a good clasp with maybe. You know, when I was working on this, I thought it would be a good one to have like a star and a, you know, kind of like a, maybe like a comet kind of action. This one, this is, uh, if you, if you can recognize these little things that see in enemies, this side they're open, this side they're closed. Isn't that cute? And then I was going to put one of those fish that, I think I have one here. Yeah, here's the fish that matches it, but I haven't put the bale on there yet. That'd be cute. I made this because I thought it would look really good for a treasure necklace. Mary asks, are these made just for molding? So the answer to that is yes. You can't do anything with these until they are cast molded and cast you could directly cast these in a tree but the problem then is that if there's a something happens with the kiln say the kiln gets shorted out or some something happens like the, the it gets unplugged or you know something happens with it maybe not even in the kiln maybe it's in the uh, process of when you're making the mold the investment mold which requires plaster being poured in if something happens, that's all you get. You don't get another shot. So it's a good idea to make a mold because this is a molded piece, right? So this is called the sprue. And this means, and this is the port that you can inject the wax. It comes in through here, hot molten wax into a silicone mold and you get copies. And sometimes the copies come out perfect. This one came out perfect, it looks like. Everything is in place. I don't have to doctor it up. But if there are any flaws, this is the time where you would fix it. And then you build a tree of these. And what that means is you have a post in the middle made out of wax as well. Let's see if I have any of that material in here. Okay, I don't. I thought I did. Oh, here's one that I never made. Look at this. Isn't that neat? This is a locket. It's a barnacle, barnacle locket. This was really difficult to cast. I actually have never gotten one that came out. And it works kind of like an, an old school in-row box with knots here on each side. And then you would slide the thing open and it would be like oh, a pill carrier. Mermaid. Yeah, it's a mermaid container for sure. And I, I kind of want to put something, so I might revisit this. And maybe I can get one that comes out clean. Because the problem is I get holes in it. And I guess I could fix it in, I don't know, maybe uh, PMC, silver PMC. This is an old one. Speaking of mermaid jewels, this one I never actually, I made only like 10 total of this. And it has a neat little piece of a poem, Teach Me to Hear the Mermaid Singing. It's a piece by John Dunn. If you collect anchoy beads, you'll, rec you'll recognize that poem. She uses that in a lot of her pieces. Oh, right. Oh, look at this. I made that a long time. Or did I make that? I don't remember. It's cute. Hmm. Yeah, look at this. I had thought maybe I'll make something with bones. These are things like this are difficult to mold. Oh, Sheree says a comment would be very timely for tomorrow. Huh. Yeah, you know, I keep forgetting about the eclipse. My sister lives in Cleveland 
where that is take I think you're in like the direct line of fire to see it I don't know I didn't look very closely I don't have time to drive up into I need to get a oh I I have boxes and boxes of waxes in this kind of these are all haven't been cast yet so I have boxes of things that I've started and never finished. I don't know about anybody else, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of what I do. I just start things. Maybe I'll do this. Look, I thought I was going to make a shawl pin. And then I thought, hey, you know what would be good about that? Is maybe I'll make it into a silver point drawing utensil. That I think would be cool if you could sharpen it. Maybe make one in flat so you could draw with it. That's called silver point when you draw with a point of silver. Oh, Wendy says, it's a dream of mine to come and watch the metal process that you guys do. Hey, maybe sometime, you know, I'll work on this. I like this piece. This is a lot, there's a lot of open work here. I think this would make a good, like, link type situation. Maybe a little heavy for an earring, but... I think it's cool. I think work on this. Either that or this. It might be too straight across, you know. I've made several pieces that were like coral shape. What I'm doing is I'm getting my tool hot. And what you probably can't see is I'm bracing my arm. And this is one of my top tool one of my top tips. For any kind of crafting, if you can, brace your arm on something for painting. Like they have things for painting, so if you're so you're not out way out just with your arm out. It's called a stump. I think. It, no, it's not a stump. That, a st um, that I can't. Rest his arm on it. Right. You know what? Now, oh, I know what it is. It's on the tip of my my tongue. I do love to make tools oh of the uh, mary says i would love to see you do a video of your metal designs well this is how i start all of these waxes will eventually be cast in metal this is a silver one i think it looks good in silver it's my favorite we mostly do pewter and our pewter looks we alloy our, alloy our own metal and that pewter is so good and looks so convincing or so clean sometimes it gets mistaken for silver and I tell you that is a real drag when that gets mixed in because it ruins the entire batch of silver and it can't be it can't be saved it's too far like you can't even send it to be refined because it changes its chemical makeup Oh, uh, Wendy, I used to sell a lot of these tools on my Etsy shop back in the day. It's been a minute since we had them. I found a couple, and I had them. I had a couple sitting here. I was going to give them to my friend Joanne. She's taken up wax work, and I've been teaching her on some days when she comes over. Pretty fun. So what I'm doing is I am using the heat from this tool... You can't see the flame here. But you can kind of see a little bit. It's almost like I would equate it to 3D drawing. Kind of like you can you can pick up a little bit of wax. That's what this pile is here for. Now some people use what's called a hot pen and they have two kinds. And one is like battery operated. It's like a pen. It's like a pen that looks like a graving tool. It's about the same size and it gets hot. It's like a little tiny soldering iron. And then they have one that's like a box and it has a tip and it has a cord running from it. And from that, those that kind of heat gives you consistent heat. Whereas this, I kind of, you know, I'm I'm hitting it. I'm getting it really hot right now. And that's good to make big big movements kind of like you're blocking things out and you can get in there and really make 
larger sort of sweeps. And as it cools, it solidifies kind of like taffy. And this is not, this kind of wax is kind of a plastic wax. It's not like, it's not like beeswax at all. It even smells kind of plasticky, it's kind of. And you can, you can file it and shape it the same way you could use with other waxes, but it's just hard enough where it doesn't break really easily. So even if I did break it, like, say this, these things break off all the time. I could fix it very easily by heating this up, attaching them. And of course it's not gonna, I'm not gonna do this easily when I'm demonstrating it. Seems like it's always the case. Whenever you're demonstrating, it's like it's gonna go off the wall. It usually takes me two seconds to do. Anytime I'm showing, it's like, okay, now you're gonna slide off and not behave yourself. Let it sit for a second, and there you go. So it's very forgiving. I think this is, might be too straight of a piece. But, you know, I like things that have a multiple use. So this might be fun to use as a bar. But, I don't know, I feel like that's that the stiffness of it is not appealing to me, which is probably why it's in this part of the box. So what I might do is make it not so perfect. I kind of wanted to make something that I could attach with stones in between, and I made a necklace not too long ago. Well, when I say not too long ago, whenever I came out with that Enchanted Adornments book, so however long that was, what was that, is that like 10 years ago? So in that, I made everything out of PMC and made the links out of PMC, so you could do that too if you get the book Enchanted Adornments. But if you don't want to make them all, like I didn't, I do not have the desire to make all the links because that project took forever. And that's why you mold things is to avoid that. Making things one at a time is great if you're getting high dollar for those things, but most artists, you know, if you made one one of the kind pieces every time going through the whole process of molding and casting, you'd actually lose money and you couldn't do that for very long. So I get an email about once every couple of weeks where someone's like, hey, I like what you do. I saw, I searched for casters and I see what you make. I looked at your Instagram and I really like your work and I would love it if you could make a... A monitor lizard or a Komodo dragon. You just insert any random weird animal. And generally speaking, I like to do that anyway. I like strange animals. But some of them that people have never heard of, um, I'm like, well, that's good. If I had more than one person ask after it, then it might be a potential. But I have lists of hundreds of things. I put everything on a list. And if I get more than one person asking about it, I'll go down the list and I'll put a star next to it every time someone asks. And uh, when I'm looking about thinking about something to make, I'll look at that list and be like, oh, I see that uh, there's a lot of people asking for foxes, more foxes anyway. And then maybe I'll do a kind of another fox design. But uh, before you send me an email asking if I'm going to make a soccer ball or a strange fish like a one of those what are that fish someone asked me to make it it was like a flat looking fish blobfish might make a blobfish so if anyone else asks me then i'll do it but it takes all it costs like a hundred bucks every time you make a mold because the stuff's not cheap it's not cheap at all yeah that's getting a little melty i don't know if i like that Oh, I haven't heard, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, that night of the museum. I do like it. The kids loved it when they were younger. Sure, yes. Didn't they stop selling PMC? They stopped making, they stopped making 
uh, PMC in silver. And that's why. Uh, it's, I think there's a few other companies making it. And I found directions on making silver clay. But boy, it looked like a lot of effort. I'm going to let this sit for a second. And this is why when I have box after box. Because, Clem, you're going to think this is, you're going to laugh, but I made that fish. I made that for Jamie Yoshida, the Huma Huma Naka Kua fish. The state fish of Hawaii. I have that somewhere. That got made because a lot of people asked for it, including Jamie Yoshida and Jason. They were like, make me that fish. And I was like, uh, you think more than one person will want that? And it turns out that they did. So it was good. So this is why I work in multiples, because when one of them, when I don't know what I'm going to do with it, or I don't know if I like it, I'll set it down and then I'll go to the next one. Unfortunately, that means that I have so many pieces that are works in process or progress. Uh, you know, it is too. It's also process, so. Oh, Clem, you have one of those fish. That's good. I didn't make that many. It's not on our shop. There's a bunch of things. I told Greg, I said, let's make a bunch of the things that are not on the store. Hey, did he get any of those, those, uh, Arizona. Max, that's my son. You guys probably forgot you that I have this. in here while I'm alive, boy. <laughs> what is this? It's my son, Max. What is it that you need? Nah, ah, Zelia's nah. like, she, t she snatched the, uh, the TV controller. <laughs> that's why he's up here. Sometimes he needs a break forced. Mm-hmm. Forced, like a forced march. It's not even a march, I just took it. Mm-hmm. That's good, because then he's he has to be active. I can always tell when Azalea snatches the remote, because then I hear him, like, hitting things outside. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to chop. So that's where it's kind of like, when you see that... It's like drawing in wax. 3D drawing, I think of it. It's a very... Now, I should say, when I say it's a very relaxing sort of craft wax work, I'm saying that now after I learned how to do it. But let me tell you, before I learned how to do it, it was not relaxing at all. And it actually took me a long time to learn because I already knew how to sculpt with polymer clay and with stoneware. I have a background in uh, fine arts. And when you get a fine arts degree at the school I went to, they require that all fine art degrees must take ceramic. I don't know why. Just because, I guess. And I did not do well throwing pots. I was actually one of the worst potters I'd ever seen. I cannot throw to save my life. They could, you could have the whole scene with, with uh, Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, which are, if, if you've ever taken a ceramics class, that's a pretty standard move is for the instructor to get behind you and help you. But my instructor had some of the foulest breath I have ever smelled in my whole life. And that halitosis, I think, made it so that I could not focus on the actual throwing. I would hold my breath for as long as I could until I'd be seeing stars. I'm like, I think I got it. Have to jump up like my butt was on fire. And I'd come in after. My pots were like five pounds each. And I'd sneak back in after everybody left. And I'd put them leather hard back on the wheel. And I would trim them. And polish them with a spoon to hide my marks. I think I changed the shape of that. I don't know if I like it. Maybe I do. I have a paper towel here. I'm wiping off the extra. But those pots were so slick. And they they were... They looked from my... What I looked I thought they looked good. But my instructor, he was like... Did you carve these pots? And I I knew that he knew 
You know how someone, when you're watching these shows, when the cops, they ask a question, but you know they already know the answer, and they ask it to test you? I could see that he was doing that move. And so I was like, yes. He's like, throwing is not your friend, is it? And I was like, no, it's not. But what I learned is that throwing a pot requires a lot of of just letting your brain go smooth you know you're not you're not trying so hard and that was always my problem because my hands would be like claws and i'd be like trying to pinch it but my hands would be all stiff and you can't do that when you're throwing a pot you've got to be all like like your hands have to be kind of like fish kind of slick and maneuverable and it it was not for me hmm Brain smooth. brain smooth needs to be able to have a brain smooth for that activity and so i did not excel at throwing a pot but you know what i can do i can hand build faster than anybody give me a slab roller or even a, a even a rolling pin and i can make a pot in like two minutes that's what i learned <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, I've, most of my crafts that I've learned have all had the same kind of lesson. Like when I was crocheting, I would have very tight stitches, very tight. And you couldn't even get to the next stitch. It was the same thing with knitting. And every time they'd be like, you know, uh, just loosen that grip. I taught myself how to knit. Oh, Azalea has some news. She taught herself how to knit the other night. And like I told her, because she was like, everybody at the retreat was trying to convince Azalea to knit. They're like, you will love it. You just need to try it. Well, and... it's salty because I was trying to do it the English way instead of the continental way that I'm used to holding crochet. And then I realized when I held the string in my left hand, and I did it that way that it was easier for me because it's like crochet. Mm, so she I'm learned crochet. continental. Which I had been telling her. I was like, you throwing that just makes my hands ache that just watching you. I, when I tried to throw it recently and I was trying to teach myself how to knit, I was fighting for my life because I hated doing that. Mm -hmm. But then when I uh, when I retaught myself the other new way, then I felt better. And now I can do it. And I made leg warmers. Cute. I want to see them. I'm almost done with it. I'm halfway done with the second one. All right, so you can also use, I'm using a file, and they have these brushes that have a very, I'll show it to you. So you can see what this thing is for. So this is, some people will use this thing for texturing a pot, but what its purpose is, is to do this. And I don't like to do this because it makes these little crumbs everywhere. You hear that sound? They make different sizes of these. These, This is for a smaller one. And then, you know what? I think you can get them at a hardware store, different different grits. But if you buy it from, like, Pottery Supply, it's, like, three times the price. The same tool. It's kind of weird. So that's one way, is scratching it with this thing. And if you could see here, there's all these little pieces of crumbs that will then eventually go onto your floor. So what I do is this. I'll heat up my tool just like this. I feel like it takes like two seconds. Actually, it's more like five. And then wipe it off and set it aside because it'll be warm. If you use it warm, really warm, it takes off a lot. You can use it to kind of take off more maybe than you need. Yeah, Colite says, I've learned that a forceful approach doesn't usually work. When I try again with a gentle touch, voila. You know that is true about a lot of things isn't it you go in kind of thinking you know what you're doing and you're like i can do this it's going to be easy and then when you start getting frustrated you start getting the the grip starts getting tighter your your jaw starts to go uh into a vice-like grip and you lean into it and unfortunately that usually means that that grip's going to be too tight and even now i tend to want to hold that tool tight but when I loosen it up, I don't have the pain that I usually will get in my knuckles. 
So that's the other thing is when you continuously put your body in a, in a sort of locked position for a lengthy amount of time, it can really do a number on your body. I even have a special chair. This chair cost me like two grand. And that was like 20 years ago. It's a good chair. It has the these, one? the blue one, yes. It's a special chair that has these armrests that can that can be raised and lowered so I'm not, so I can actually rest my arms. Because when you have your arms floating free far of, out, 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 out in front of you crafting, it's a lot of stress on your neck muscles. And you start leaning your head forward. And sometimes you can sit when you're driving, you know, you kind of lean forward and you're suddenly you're slouched in front. And that can happen very easily when you do this type of work because it's only natural that you're just sort of going to lean into your work and look at it closer. So now I'm adding some details. I'm making this sort of kind of, I don't know what kind of tree this is going to be, but I think it's going to be kind of a bumpy old tree. On my walk yesterday, I spotted several really beautiful trees that I hadn't noticed before. Oh, yeah, Teresa says, like, playing the piano, loose, relaxed hands and wrist guided by the forearms. Yeah, I've heard that. I've definitely heard that. Yesterday, Azalea and I, we hosted a, kind of a ladies' day. And we had some of our friends come over, and I spread out. We were going to do a big dye pot. We were going to do the darkest, blackest black dye pot. But we were having so much fun with needle felting and mixing colors that the dye pot kind of got forgotten about. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, that was a good time yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's healing to be amongst other women. Yeah, it kind of, it is. I told the I said, it is healing to be amongst other women. It's also very kind of, like that energy of people t being together, supporting each other, listening intently to each other's stories. It's kind of a way to connect and be in the moment. And kind of be open to the sort of synchronicities that occur. Like, I went upstairs and I was like, hey, you guys want to see this beautiful color I just picked up? And my friend that came over is a, a expert at dyeing fibers. That's her gig. She's a fab She makes yarn. She knits. She, knits, she spins. She spins. She spins and dyes all kinds of of uh, uh, fibers and it was funny because I didn't know her until the retreat but I but we have friends in common which was funny because I've been hearing her about her from my friend Noma for years and I didn't realize that who that was and when I brought down the roving that I had just purchased at SAF in October, I picked that up and I brought it down and she's like, that's so funny you brought this down because this is my brand. This is the, the yarn that or the the roving that I make. And it was it kind of floored me because if you've been to the Southeastern Animal Fiber Festival, you would see that you're met with literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of types of of yarn and fiber from all over the United States and the world because there's a lot of people that come from and the fact that you picked hers yeah and it was so crazy I picked her her fiber out of all of that so oh so I see a pretty good so Shamai if I'm saying your name right ask what can if I can explain what I'm doing Shamai what I'm doing is I'm making a master this is a wax master and this will be cast and molded. So once this is finished to my desired outcome, a silicone mold will be made. And then from that mold, we will inject more wax and cast it in either silver or bronze or shibuichi. And then from that, 
you can make another what's called a production mold which is kind of like a big pie mold and from that you can spin pewter pieces so the first thing you make is this to get anything you need this you can do it in other materials you can use whatever you want to make a master you just have to be able to mold it i used to use polymer clay and i will say that before that when i was working with polymer clay i thought that polymer clay was the best most wonderful product and there's no i mean i was like you can carve it you can sand it you can do all this stuff and then you can mold it after. But what you can't do is you can't do stuff like this because polymer clay and stoneware and pretty much every other kind of clay and some waxes, and like a lot of waxes won't, won't be happy making these sort of shapes. Like paraffin, paraffin doesn't want to do this. Paraffin wants to make simple shapes. And this wax, which is made, it's, it's called a jeweler's wax. I blend my own mix of purple wax pellets and red to make this color. Sometimes it comes in like a pale blue or like this color. This is another, this one's a blue wax. And I find this color hard to look at. And so it makes it, this is when in my miniature phase, I used to make 112th scale miniatures. This bronze, this actually was at the Royal Miniature Society that got put on there and was displayed maybe five years ago. Wow. Oh, this is a potential. I'm making, I was making all these zoo animals. I didn't finish it. I just saw this in the box. That's on a, I don't know, I don't know about coming soon, but that's one I just saw. Here's one of my other miniatures and it's a different color. It's a different mix. This has more blue in it. So we mix it. This is really hard to see. This is a pink wax and it's, you can see it doesn't take detail very well. It doesn't want the detail. It goes, well there it has some detail, but it tends to be kind of smushy looking and it does this kind of melty action. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. There's also a wax that is gold so that when you use it and you show a customer or a client, they're like, oh yeah. So they can really visualize because sometimes I sometimes people can't visualize when they see it in this material they look at it and they're like ah uh, what is that supposed to be and you can be like oh it's supposed to be a ring or whatever but they make that in another material but it's so hard to see that it's unpleasant at least for me I mean I know there's I mean they make it so somebody must like using it But this is a process that can be done by a lot of different skill levels. Azalea and I were talking about opening up. We've been working on opening up the studio and getting it ready to have classes. I want to host some classes here and some workshops and maybe some retreats. It's that time I'm feeling it, you know, that sort of magic of being with others. I was in a state for a long time of not wanting to be around people. And now it's like my new priority. Ever since my dad died, I've had that kind of desire to reach out and connect with other artists, mostly women. I've been strengthening my relationships with my female friends and making an effort. You know, it's very easy when you're self-employed and you're kind of an introvert like myself, it's very easy to kind of tuck yourself away and not come out and just only come out when you have to for shows. Which is recently in the last few years, especially with COVID and everything, um, I did not get out a lot and I was very isolated. And when the only people you talk to are like your family members, it can be very it can be hard to sort of feel like you belong in the world, I guess. That's a kind of a very generalized way of saying that. It kind of felt like I felt more comfortable when I was out in the woods. Like I felt like this is where I, I am most connected and most comfortable. And then being in a room with a bunch of people, like going to 
like one of, like an open mic would be like torture because I couldn't couldn't stand to be around a lot of people. And now that's different, you know, it's to it's like I long for mic. hmm still don't want to go to an open mic. An open mic for me is not my favorite just because it's um it's so uh unpredictable, I guess. Drunk, so. Oh, and then there's drunk I'm uncomfortable around like when if there's uh an element of sort of that sort of element of chaos. Oh, I yeah, I see Sharon is talking about yes to retreats. Had a humble beads weekend. Vote 10, very good. So was that I see a, a couple of comments and I see that that was through a Zoom. We were talking about doing that and and making up a Zoom type of class. That's on our list. But mostly I'm interested in having that here. I don't know how many of you would come to Asheville. I don't know that I could for a long time I thought, man, I don't know how I could host them you know, host people, but a friend of mine was like, you do know you don't have to have everybody stay at your house, right? <laughs> and in the past, everybody just stayed with me. And, uh, you know, that was fine. And I like it. I like having, it's funny because I love having people visit my studio. And I'm always trying to lure people here. Azalea's like, mom, stop it with the invites. Mm -hmm. She's like, can you stop? Because there was one person she, I was like, come in and, and we'll do some lap work or uh, lap, uh, lap grinding. She's like, mom, please. <laughs> well, that person was just generally kind of annoying to be around. Yeah. Sometimes you get that with it when you have a group and you're stuck together for days at a time or a whole weekend. You can see my tree is getting a little more refined and that's part of wax work is the push and pull of the material where you want to you want to not be so stiff with it and plus when you're stiff with it your hands will ache but the spontaneity of just kind of moving the wax around and not really I'm just sort of letting the wax guide me at this point I've made so many of these things that my brain right now is just on and my hands are on autopilot and I'm just sort of making shapes with it and and doing looking at this like i'm just shaping a tree a tree that i've seen before and i feel like it's coming along it looks better than when i started for sure now these kind of types of open work pieces can be a challenge because all these little areas will need to have to go in with an exacto blade and cleaned out every time so i don't usually like to make these that often but they do look so pretty and they especially look good with with uh, transparent or colored resin. Oh, Anne Gardan, our friend. Oh, Sheree says, have your ha have your classes in your house and housing elsewhere. Yes. <laughs> Kalite says sleepover and crafts. Well, that's how I used to do that. Okay, another question from Shamai. It's such intricate work. Do you make several pieces from one mold? Is that possible? While I'm at it, they're beautiful. Thank you. Yes. So the point of making a mold, I was going to say, do I have a mold up here? I moved all my molds downstairs just so I could straighten up. I've been, I had everything on every level and it was getting to be kind of chaotic. So we've been working hard at making everything kind of tidy and so that we can find things. So I don't have any molds at hand to show you, but the point of the mold is that you get more than one copy. Some things, you don't get that many at all. So it's good to have the potential. I mean, if you only want one, you only want one piece, then you can just direct cast and you can get one out of your, out of your wax master. That's what this is. This is called your wax master. Now, if I taught a class, I think what I would offer is we could cast it or you could you could make a ring and direct cast it or you could make a mold. But the thing about mold making is it's kind of expensive. Like I was saying earlier, it costs about 100 bucks, actually around 120. 
to go through all the steps. So it's not a cheap process. And when I was starting my business, the mold making was for sure the most expensive part of having a business with cast cast metal. It's very expensive. And my, you know what? I just said 120 back then the I paid, I paid like, like 150, 160 for my mold. So what I'm quoting you is like my cost in making. That's like, that's not even, that was like a long time ago. So that will give you an indication now. It's probably a lot more to make those molds. But the upswing is, is that you can cast, if you have a really good, easy piece to make, then you can get countless, countless pieces. But if you have something that's like, say, uh, like this cat I'm making, this cat out of the mold, because of the feet being the way they are, I will not get that. I won't get that many pieces out of this. That's for sure. I'll probably get from this one. And that's expected because I need to, I would, I would mold this, but the outcome of this is not to be made in metal. It's going to be made in resin or polyurethane. I haven't decided yet. But with things like that, you might not get that many. Or things like this I'm working on. This has been, I've been working on this thing for flipping forever. And I, the reason I haven't finished it, this is my, I want to make this tool of power for my crochet necklaces. But I'm unhappy with this spot right here. I don't love it. So, Oh, Wendy, that cat was so cute. She showed it to me earlier. I was like, that's so adorable. And I did think that when I said, look, just like Marty. I'm going to show. I didn't notice. I can keep talking about this. I'm, I've almost been going an hour. Nobody said anything. <laughs> Azalea's like, you seem like you're having fun is the look she just gave me. And I will say, if you're interested, you can hit me with a comment and say, I would like to come and we'll look at that. Or maybe even a heart or something or a thumbs up. And I'll look at it and say, if you guys are interested in workshops, or you can say a Zoom, what's more interesting? In person or Zoom? And maybe write it in the comments so we can get kind of out of the people watching right now, how many people are interested in coming in live action. We'd make tools. That could be fun. Could make. Usually, when I was teaching the classes, I would have folks learn how to make. And you know, as I'm sitting here putting tools away, I keep working on. It. I keep picking up a tool to work on. It. I need to just blow this out. I see Clem. There's a, a vote for for Zoom. That seems cool. Seems like a more. It's easier to do a Zoom than live action for sure. But I do see. Pat says in person. Sharon says in person. Some people might, June says might Zoom. not be able to uh, make it over here. Yeah. So, so far it's two and two. Yeah, let's say I counted it. Wendy says many. Maybe she means any. I see Zoom. Oh, so. Wendy would definitely choose in person because Wendy uh, lives not that far away from us. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, it seems like there's a good amount of people interested in the Zoom. And what we could do is do it in such a way where we send everybody. I've been thinking about this of how to do it. Where we'd send everybody like a ring blank. And you could you could just follow along, ask questions, and then send us the wax in a box with cotton around it. And then we'd cast it. That's one idea we had. I don't know how that how great that would work. But um, it's something I was thinking about, and I think that might be a good one, you know, to start with a Zoom. Don't you think? Might be. It looks like a lot of people are saying Zoom. I see so far. One, two, three. I, mean, I can't count these because I can't really even read them. They're kind of far away. Oh, looks like a lot for Zoom, so it's a good option. Oh, Terry says she would love to travel. Well, that would be fun if y'all came to visit, wouldn't it? I love that story. All right, daughter. Zoom would be more affordable for sure because you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to travel here. That's that's the bonus of that. 
All right. I have some really pretty things to show y'all today. We're balancing it all because, as you probably know, my table is full of stuff. Full of a lot of stuff. I covered a bunch of silver buttons. That's why I didn't notice that we were going so long. I put some linen wrapping the, bed, mm. the buttons for my tablet. Carla says she'd travel, but she's not that far away. Well, we could do. It just depends on every, if everybody is interested in in um like what the class you know it just depends we have a uh, we have several ideas for classes okay i'm gonna put this this is a needle for measuring that but it also that's like millimeter size so that is such a good good tool we got from the retreat that's what we found on the retreat it was in our bag this was our goodie bag i think i showed it isn't that so cute it came with mending for shishiko mending i haven't gotten into it yet but Pretty cool. All those needles and shishiko thread. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so well stocked. I was pretty impressed. Yeah, we'd have to make goodie bags. Oh yeah, if it was in person, then we would we would have a good time because then you could use all my stuff. That would be the most fun. That would be the most That's, That's the most fun. Alright, we're ready. Alright, so I'm going to start with... What do you think I should start with? You want to start with the brass? Bronze, I mean? You can start anywhere. Oh, alright. Well, I have three different types of things to show you today. So I have... How many of these do I have? I have one. We had to do some casting. And... There was an extra from oh, when we were redoing. We start, let's oh, do the thing. That's not that important. I'm oh. talking about the the stuff that was lost um anybody that had items that i could not replace from any missing order you would have received an email and today you would have received a gift card amounting to the amount of the item that was lost so you know you you everybody check your emails for any sort of gift card credits that you can use on anything you purchase tonight or on the store or whatever yeah you it's can use it anything. anywhere yeah on our from here so if you haven't shopped with us or done any kind of live sale with us, you, may put the other graphic up. you comment here during the live and it's live when you see the red box that says live. And I think that's true for YouTube. And this is a graphic that Azalea made. She's very pleased with it. Well, so this is useful. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do the speech every time I can just show it. It's nice and big type. Mm. Yeah, thank you for making that. So you can send them an e send us an email when you if you're watching on replay. All right, so that looks like that's already gone. Thank you, Pat. Okay, now I have this little guy, and I made there's two more. So this is nine eighty eight. There's two total. Two. That's a thick bronze dragon. It looks like the coin, but it's thick. It's, it's very soft. thick, and it has this quote on it. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. By Show Roald Dahl. Oh, 988. Yeah, we got two of them. I two. They're nice and thick and heavy duty. So I usually, that's, it is um, very thick and heavy. Show the side view. Side view. It's way thicker than the coins. Yeah. But I think I'll mark this one. I'll do a slash on this one. Where's that marker? I'll do that at, let's see. Let me think about that. How about 40? Do that at 40. We have one left. One left at 40. Yeah, the detail on this is a, it's a very substantial piece. It's much heavier than the other bronze version. And the reason it's a little bit, this is a little bit harder to make. Oh, thank you, Allison and June. Because it has the text on the back, and we polish it so the text is legible. It can be fussy to make that. 
Okay, I have one of these, $9.89 for $30. I've had people ask for that before. So we, this one is to be strung from here, and there's a hole here. I don't know if you can see that. I've got to keep the tag view for a lot longer. So oh, people sorry. Can't remember the number. Yeah, there you go. Nine eighty nine. It's a pretty big piece, but I think of this one as a more sculptural. You know, because her back is also detailed, not the tail part, but her back. And this one looks good. You, you could do from here and here to put that, you know, like like that spot. And I would think that would look good with pearls, for my personal opinion. And hang a great big pearl from here. Wouldn't that be delightful? It would be. So delightful. Oh, has a question. She asks if I was able to ship the newer stuff together to her. Thanks for all your hard work. Now, I have not shipped in a couple days but when i do and i combine orders you get a bunch of emails that are like oh google studios fulfilled this order and fulfilled this order and fulfilled this one and then when i make a shipping label for one package then you'll get a notification for that with tracking so if um if you want to know anything about that status you'll get emails for sure shopify sends lots of emails whenever i do anything so you'll be able to see 990 i have two of these silver silver Little moon buttons. They These, got something carved on the other side, don't they? That's, um, th my sister made this. Oh, cute. So my sister made this. I never sell these, by the way, because I use these on my personal crochet. But I have two I'm willing to part with. $9.90. If anyone wants it, $16. You can get little. These are super thin. They're different than the one that's in... The one that you made is a little more stout and thick. Oh, Carrie Rossi wants both of them. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So I have some in a bronze set. This one is $9.83, $16. I have two bronze. Oh, yeah, that toggle. Mm-hmm. Bronze. Or maybe that's that looks like silver it's to me. It's a very simple and effective toggle. It's one of my my best ones. Oh, stuck. you have you have these mixed, Azalea. There's like a silver. You oh, have them. A silver one and a bronze that's one. a silver one and a bronze one. So. Oh. Okay. Put the. Uh... We'll come back to this then. I'll fix this issue. Go move on, and we'll come okay. back to it. I didn't realize they look so good and shiny that they look the same. <laughs> the mushroom clasp. So some of these you'll probably recognize from a couple of weeks ago. This is from the recast that we did. 984 for this. I'll do a, a discount on this one. 14 on that. If there's anyone interested, 984. This is 986. Forever beautiful. This started off as a bronze clay coin. And that's 986. Okay, we've got this one here. This is the bronze one. So you can do that lot number and then I'm gonna put out another one real fast. Okay, this one. I did not realize I made that mistake. That's fine. They look similar. This is the bronze. Good quality then. 983. Mary says, I watched a video a while back. You were all talking about the Sundance Cataloger magazine. You all showed designs you had made in that magazine. I'm wondering if it's that about the beading. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't make any of the pieces in that. That, well, that uh, thing was a GBE thing, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that was a GBE thing. I think you were talking about when we were making the designs in Stringing magazine. But the some of the designs in the... Uh, and Sundance were very similar. Okay, here's a silver one. The toggle, it's $9.99. So this is the one in Sterling. I have done a ton of sea animals. Lots of sea animals. That's one of my favorite things to do. Thank you, Carrie. Oh, now here's some fun thing. Here's a Shibuichi 
it's kind of a pinkish metal. You see that? It's like slightly... This is polished. Shibuichi is silver and copper. It's a material used in ancient Japan. First used, they first found it in the handguard on a katana. I can't think the name of that. So this is $9.85. It's $18. And that's a Shibuichi. It's silver and copper. And the reason they used a silver copper alloy is because this is super, super hard and it it's very difficult to nick it so that's why they would do that and they made some really ornate hand guards it came out beautiful okay so here's something i have two of these so get ready y'all i have only two i don't know there's no more of this i might be able to get more make it this is 9.95 and this is look at this toad that i made this does not come out at all i made this for pewter but this this is what I was talking about with how many you can get out of mold. We've only gotten like six of these total because they're really hard to cast. Those little arms and feet, they don't want it. So I only have two. If there's enough interest, then there's at least wool balls. We'll make more. But he's detailed. Look at his little feet. That's so cute. Even on the the whole thing. If those, I have, yeah, so I have to make, where's 985? You showed that one a minute ago. I got caught behind a little bit when I was making the new tags. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. So this one's a popular one. This is 994. This is one of our all time favorite ones that we make. I make this all the time, all the time. This is called the Rumi bird pendant. It's had to be remade several times. Oh, the, uh, oh, I have a piece that you're talking about. Wendy is asking if I know anything about a metal from India that is made up of four to five metals. Oh, well, you know what I do? And I have a piece. My sister brought me back a piece from India a long time ago. And I, my friend Lynn, she went through the trouble. How many of these do I have? There's three of these. Perfect. And she told me about it and did all this research and discovered how, what all the metals, it's silver, copper. I think that there's, what, what else was in it? There's gold. There was a lot of different metals in it. It was amazing. I don't know how accurate. I did not send it to be Mary checked. Zalima's question. Uh, she says, I just ordered, I just purchased a couple of your pendants from your site. So would you still have my address and email if I want to order? Yes. Yes. Okay, 996. This one does not get made either because of the ears. So that did not yeah, get. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, well, I didn't, we didn't make it. So there are, let's see. Two there's two of them. If in, if there are any of these that you guys like and there's there's only, you know, there's more people, we'll put together another batch. So this is a really charming one. But it never got made in pewter. It was supposed to be, but we never made it. So there's only two. Nine ninety six. If there's a lot of folks, you can send me an email if you're interested on something that, on the castable pieces, and we will add it to the list of things to make. Oh, this is a good one. This is one of my all time favorites. Okay, get ready. Nine nine ninety seven. Thirty two dollars. You've seen this in my necklaces before. It has a hole at the beak and at the tail. And I like to use it to hang a drop or a fruit looking piece at the end like it's got it in its beak. It's so cute. I have two of them. $9.97. So remember, if you get discouraged and say, oh, I didn't, I did not, I did not uh, get on that list. Because what we're doing is I have on StreamYard, they're collecting all the, the comments right here for us. I see them all. And we look at the one, the timestamp. And so the first two that come up are the ones we will get it. I feel like that's fair. Azalea is pretty good at matching that up. So if there's one that you like and you're not on the list for getting it, what we can do is put you on another list. So you can message me here or to Azalea and she will put that list together. Nice. 
Okay, now this is one of my favorites. That one we have five of. We have five because I, I, I don't know if anyone else likes this, but this is one of my favorites. That's because the last silver piece, I believe. Or if it's you've, the last metal. If you've ever seen ancient maps they'll, on the very edges, there are all those monsters. This is what that reminded me of. And it's pretty detailed. It has some nice, like, scal like scaling on its body. And look at its little eye. Isn't it so charming? Here are there, there be dragons. $9.98, $30. I have five. I love this piece. Look at his little swirly tail. Isn't that so cute? I don't have one of these in silver, so I might have to make myself a necklace with this and put it on my charm necklace. This one would look good. I have this charm necklace that I wear when I feel like I need to be in a kind of a sweet sort of disposition and when I'm feeling kind of horrendous I'll put this on I made all the links on this chain and these are some of my all-time favorite glass beads these are made by a gal named Basha she makes these they're called Basha beads awesome. I carved some of these these are sapphires they're rough sapphires we have two left oh this is the stick that I was talking about so I made these sticks see and in times past, you've seen me talk about adding the sugar to a piece, like the little sprinkles. This is what I'm talking about. Look, I have these little rubies. The sugar, the sugar sparkle. So I hang that there. This I drilled. We have uh, two left of the dragons. But anyway, I made this. I think this would go well, because I'll add to this necklace periodically. Oh, here's one of my... I put one of them. This one actually cracked but you know what i didn't care and it looked cool so i kept it and i put it on there because the color i liked but i think this one would fit nicely on this necklace it's getting heavy and this is a piece that i made this is a piece of sunstone with with what's called latticing i don't know if you can see that that's i carved that on my lap grinder that was a high this you know this one piece was like forty dollars if you can believe that sometimes the rough is so expensive this is a piece of where's that one here's a piece of moldavite and i don't know if you know what that is but moldavite's like it, they call it a tektite it's actually glass and what happens is when the meteorite hits the ground it fuses all the glass in that area and you get this stone and in different places you can get different types of tektites so this comes from now moldavite now i knew this and that's i'm drawing a blank and i think i don't i'm like is it moldovia where did it come from but i want to say it's in like these desert areas there's one called libyan desert glass and it's the same thing but it's a different color and it's it's glass but it's made by a meteor so anyway, that's what I would put that with, is I hang things from these necklaces like this. I have a few like this. And when I wear them, I think of, I think of it as like kind of a very sort of sacred object. Like I have to have, to be in the mindset to wear it, I need to be in a good state. I can't be like negative or sitting in traffic. And I learned that this friend of mine went to see a rabbi and the the rabbi gave this this uh, advice to carry something precious and only touch it if you are in a state of peacefulness and you're like the most pure you can be you're only supposed to touch it then and so that gave me that idea all right so we're moving on all right so 992 i've got these really sweet rainbow tourmalines now i got these for a song and I'm passing that on to you. So these even include some, there might be one of the truly blue and Dicolite, but most of these are not like the color. So gemstones are graded by how, by co color, cut and clarity. Those are the top things. So these are pretty, but they're not as good as say the ones we had last week, which were bigger. They were micro faceted tighter. These are good. They're probably an like a B plus grade, I would say. Pretty good, but not super amazing. I have 12. I'm gonna put, I have some set aside for some kits that I have, 
that I'm going to put with like ruby, small little rubies and sapphires. Oh, I did. I did have some. I was going to show that. There's a, a rough I have over here. All right. Okay, so that's, yeah, these have a great coloration to them. And I have several. There's 12. These are really beautiful. They're not a graduated strand, but they do have a good, There's so there's black tourmaline. These are a deep green, green blue teal coming down into this chartreuse. And this, one of my favorite colors that there, there's always only a few pieces that are like juicy sunstone colors. And then a couple of them have a mix. Oh, keep sorry. It, gotta keep it in view. Nine ninety two, ten dollars for this little mini Hank. Okay. I have such good colors for mm -hmm. so cheap. That's crazy. Okay, so this is I love this. I didn't get a lot of it because there wasn't a lot to get. But this is Imperial Kyanite. And they call it that because it has these little flecks of I think it's I think when I look at that, they told me it was either hematite or black tourmaline. I can't remember exactly what that fleck is, but it has a shine to it. It's a pretty unique for kyanite. It's also more expensive. This is, it's a beautiful color. It's a fantastic cut. They're well drilled, $9.91, but I'll put these at 20. I love them. I only have a few strands of that. There's eight of this. I'm going to put this. I had this. You might have seen this in that kit with the lapidolite, the gem grade. We should have I got all that I could find eight. of this. Because I remember I had a couple. I'm sorry. 991. Flip it. How many do we have? Eight. Okay. Yeah, these are fantastic. They're pretty expensive, though. That's the only drag about them is they're, they don't come cheap. This cut particularly, I was informed that it takes a little more to do this because there's a lot of waste when trying to make this cut particularly because uh, kyanite is kind of grows in sort of a slab sort of shape, I guess. So what that means, this is the crystalline structure of a sapphire crystal. This is how it grows. It's kind of, if you could see in the light, it's a very pretty blue, but you can't see it in here. I don't know. It's not bright enough in here to see it. But it's super hard, and it has that kind of faceted look. That's that structure of how it grows. Some things grow in more of a plane or a stack type of situation, kind of like labradorite. If you look at it, or sunstone, when I say stack, you get that shine. These are beautifully faceted. Yeah, Wendy said she tried to buy a strand, and they're between two and three hundred dollars. Yeah, they're not. I know for kyanite, and you know what's even more pricey is orange kyanite. I went looking for it. I couldn't find any this Tucson. Oh, Donna, now that reminds me. Shoot, that's what it was. I see your name, Donna, and I was going to. Now I have the recollection of showing how I was going to use those uh, those beads I got from you in a treasure necklace. Azalea, write it down for me. We'll do that on Wednesday. So anyway, that is the kyanite. I have it at 20 and it's 991. That's actually pretty good. I mean, if you consider the uh the, we have one left. Yeah, it's outstanding. And this, I'm so excited about this. I don't know how y'all feel about this, but um this is an iolite. Wait, what am I supposed to be saying about Donna? What am I supposed to be writing for? That I'm supposed to do a glass bead demo with that with me this the uh all right so this is a really good they call it punjab iolite it's an indian iolite this is not dyed this is the natural color when i first saw it i was i thought that this was tanzanite and so i got all that i could get and I'm going to put some of it in kits because I'm crazy about it. It's a different kind of, I don't know if you can see it. It's between a periwinkle and a sapphire pale blue. It's a really beautiful, like I can't even hardly believe that. I'll mark it. Let's see. We'll do a discount on that one too. 22, 
Yeah, and it you know it's fun because they're about this they're the size of these, I think. I'm matching that up. Let's see. What would that fit in? How do I fit that How there? Where did I list? Put that in. So they're five. about four millimeter, five millimeter we across. Have, I think we only have we have one left, I think. Actually no, we don't have any left now. Oh. Yippee! Oh, thank you all. Isn't that I think these are beautiful and holy smokes and it feels like and these were pretty well drilled weren't they yes i they were easy to string yeah so sometimes you'll get stuff that is kind of hard these aren't they don't have massive holes but they have a pretty good hole so you should be able to get that in either a 24 gauge wire soft flex easily or you could put that on on a very t thin cord like a nylon yeah, I look forward to seeing what people make with it. It's delightful. Yeah, it's a very sapphire. Um, you know, I had to test it, Wendy. And sometimes, if you don't know, I was like, is I was had to make sure what it is. And usually I sacrifice one and I will crush it in my pliers. And I know the difference in feeling between that. Because if it crushes easily, it's not a sapphire. A sapphire is a nine on the hardness scale. And if it's uh, easily crushed, that's not a sapphire. Because a sapphire, you're going to have to put your back into it to, to crush it. All right, are we, is that it? Yeah, I think that's Before it. Azalea it, is going it. to show what we have. Yeah. That's it. I think the only thing we have left are two of these dragons. I think that's it. Everything else is gone. Oh, the dragons? Yeah, we have two left, I believe. The dragon 998, we have five of them. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Let me see 998 real quick. Show it again. Yeah, that's surprising. Mm -hmm. I know, look at its sweet smile. It's a very sweet little dragon, sea dragon, friendly, 3D. Looks good on all sides. <laughs> it's like how I describe Marty. That's exactly Marty. He is sweet and lovely. Yeah, it looks like we somewhere. have three of them left, I guess. Oh, that's okay. Because oh. I love it. Yeah, all right, perfect. 993, if anyone's interested in that little baby dragon. 998. 98, I meant to say. 998. Sorry. It's okay. Because I, sometimes I get the uh, what you call the dyslexia. It's okay, I do too. All right, folks, I'm going to flip this. Thank you all for being very patient while I was messing around with this. I'm going to flip the camera around. No, wait. Why? Again. Yeah. Oh. People didn't get a very long glance. So we have two left of those. I missed the one number. So two left of those dragons. If anybody wants that, if anybody's watching the replay. Okay. There's the whole list. So those dragons are left. Two of them. That's it. Two left. That's it. All right. So awesome. I'm getting ready to flip it. Friends, tie it up. Wednesday, you want to see what I make, Donna? I'm gonna to have to do a good job because I don't want to fail you. No, I don't want to fail you. I don't want to make something ugly. I won't because those beads Better are plan awesome. It in advance, then. All right, friends, thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you. You could do. You could be watching any kind of show, but 50 of you out there decided to watch 52, us live. 52 of us. Barely anybody has left since we started. I know. All right, friends. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We will show up again this Wednesday. And we'll have another... I don't know what we're going to do for the tutorial. We oh, always... no, I just said that. How can I even say that? I just said two minutes ago. We're going to show Donna. Isn't that crazy? That I did that? That's like instant amnesia. Oh, send me a friend request. <laughs> we're already friends. Donna, what are you talking about? <laughs> At least I see your post, so surely that means, you know. Yes, Clem, thank you for being a hardcore fan. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you, Lori. We had a wonderful time, and thanks for watching me do my wax work and giving us some insight on our retreat and workshop possibilities. You can always send us an email if you have an idea for stuff you'd like to see. That's always welcome. And, oh, oh, nice. 
she was talking to Wendy. I was like, of course. All right. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. And thanks for joining us on our magic hour. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye.